everyone, this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today we're going to go over some EKG material. In this video, we're going to cover the basic EKG strip, the PQRST um, EKG tracing that you'll see. I'm going to explain what each part of it, where it's located, and how what each part of it represents. Before you even start analyzing strip rhythms such as AFib, VTAC, any of that, you need to know the basics. So this is the foundation of it. In our later videos, we'll be going over different types of rhythms and um, what to look for as a nurse. But first, let's just go over the basics so we can lay the foundation so you'll understand it. Plus, you'll need to know this for a lot of your nursing classes, your patho class, and this will just help give you a firm grasp on it. And I've tried to take the material and make it as easy as possible and point out the highlights that you may be tested on in nursing school. So after we go over this video, go to our website, registernursern.com, and test your knowledge on how well you grasp this material that we learned today. A lot of those questions you may see on your test in school, so it'll just help you. So let's get started. Here we have um, a regular EKG tracing. You have your P wave, your QRS um, complex, and your T wave. And I'm going to go over all that and tell you what each of it represents. In the previous video I made, we went over the electrical conduction of the heart because that's all your waveform is. It's electrical conduction that your little electrodes are picking up that the heart is making. And it makes this cool thing for us to look so we can analyze and treat the patient better. So if you don't know how the electrical system flows through the heart, I really recommend that you check out that video and um, understand that because we go over where it's located in the heart and we break it down and make it easier for you to remember. And also there's a quiz on that if you want to watch that as well. So first let's, let's get started with the P wave. On almost every EKG strip, unless the patient's in a dysrhythmia, you're going to have a P wave. Your P wave is atrial contraction. It originates in the SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart, which beats at 60 to 100 beats per minute. Um, in some dysrhythmias, you, every time you even look at a, a wave, you want to look at your P waves. That is where you start because some P waves can be messed up. They can have a long PR interval, and it tells you a lot about how your patient's doing. So there's your P wave. Again, it represents atrial contraction. It's those atriums in the heart contracting, which is also the fancy term called depolarization. They're contracting. Then you have your QRS complex. This is what's called your ventricle contraction, which they call it ventricle depolarization. This is when your ventricles are contracting. They're pumping that blood. So the ventricles are just so big that they produce this huge complex. And then after that, you have a T wave. The T wave is your ventricles repolarizing. They are resting. Again, the ventricles are so big, whenever they contract, they make the huge QRS complex that whenever they rest, you can even see them repolarization, repolarizing because they're so big. So you're going to see your T wave. Now, sometimes you can see a U wave. It's not very common. Um, in the clinical setting, I've only seen it like once or twice. It's not very common to see on a patient, but they think that the U wave is produced by the resting of the Purkinje fibers. They're not really sure, but that's what the literature says. And your Purkinje fibers, remember, you have your AV node, the bundle of his, and your bundle of his branches off to the right and left bundles, and then you have those Purkinje fibers. So whenever they're saying that the Purkinje fibers have already depolarized and they're resting, they're saying the U wave is being caused by that. And sometimes you'll see that in patients who have severe hypokalemia, which is a low potassium level. So you can see that. Um, so that is how, what your common PQRS complex looks like. Now let's go over the intervals that you'll see in the clinical setting. Okay, let's talk about now how the EKG tracing is split up into different intervals and segments and um, complexes because on exams, a lot of time you are given a blank wave and you are expected to label where the P wave is, where the PR interval is, and things like that. So on that quiz that I was talking about on the beginning of the video, we have blank diagrams and you'll be required to fill this stuff in. So it'll just help prepare you before you take a test. So let's go over these different types of complexes and segments. Okay, the very first thing we're going to go over is called the PR interval. The PR interval starts 
at the um, P wave, which is where you have atrial contraction. Remember, the P wave represents atrial contraction. And it ends right before you have ventricle contraction. So that is where your PR interval is. And notice that little delay that, remember we were talking about in the last video, the AV node is the gatekeeper. It's responsible for the delay. So that's where you're seeing that delay right before you see the contraction of the ventricles. Because whenever you have, you want that delay because if you don't, your ventricles, your atrium will not completely deliver blood to your ventricles and you'll have backflow of blood. So you want that little delay that you're seeing right there. Now the QRS complex. Remember, that is the contraction of the ventricles. Your ventricles are so big that they're causing this huge impulse on this electricity conduction, and you see the QRS interval. So, complex. Um, then you will have what's called the ST segment. This starts at the end of ventricular contraction and begins right before the T wave, which is showing you your ventricles repolarizing, which resting. So you will see the ST segment. The ST segment is really important when diagnosing cardiac MIs. Um, a lot of times working in the stress lab, we will really pay attention to the S for any ST elevation. It tells you a lot about what's going on with the patient. So that's what they're talking about whenever you hear ST elevation, things like that. They're looking at your ST segment. So that is about everything that you would need to know about your PQRS waves that you will see in the clinical setting. Again, this is just a baseline to help you to start understanding dysrhythmias, which we'll be going over in our other videos. Um, be sure to go and take that quiz on registerednursrn.com to test your knowledge on how well you grasp this. We have other quizzes that will prepare you for NCLEX, doses and calculations, ABGs, personality quizzes, everything. So be sure to go there and thank you so much for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and I hope you have a great day.